Hey everyone, this is episode 95 of In Real Time. Welcome back here with me is, man, just us wearing match gear. Well, you know, just because we're happy <laughs> about the only team that won this week. But here with me is OSG. How's it going, sir? Not necessarily true, the only team that won this week. We, you know, we have Dose as well that won, but uh, yeah. big ones. But chilling, man, chilling. It's a, a three-day weekend, so... I got to enjoy a three-day weekend at home, too. I didn't have to. I traveled on Friday, and I traveled right back on Friday night. So I had Saturday, Sunday, and Monday as we're recording just to chill and relax and sit back for a change and, and just re- re- uh, recharge and get ready for the next run whenever it comes because we ain't got a run coming up right now. Got a break. But, man, what's going on with you? No, man, just like you said, that Memorial Day weekend, recording Memorial Day, that's a pretty good day to relax since I don't really get a lot of holidays in the company. And it's kind of like I finally get to sit down and, and just have a life for, for a change, you know? And, and it's been pretty good, honestly. Like outside of soccer, I've been catching up with friends a lot and, and just, just getting to sit around and just, just relax for now. It's pretty good for me. And, of course, all, a lot of soccer in Europe has been winding down. Uh, the season for, for Real Madrid just came to a close in, in La Liga uh, just before the Champions League final next weekend. And, no, and I'm, I'm still looking forward to it. That's going to be insane. Um, no, yeah, for, uh, for Your season for Man City uh, just ended, so it's probably sad for you. Yeah, I mean, season ends at the same time every year so we you know, won the title that's fine lost the fa cup final which is <laughs> that sounds fun. which is yeah, yeah no big deal you, you still won the you still won the league title uh, the fa cup would have been a nice little trophy to get especially against man u but you know it, it is what it is you know still still the best team over there in england so but yeah it's a uh, off season now so but off season's quick so you know it pops back back up real quick and uh, we'll look at the new kids during the summer. So that's all right. We got we got Dynamo Dash and, and those to keep us busy. You just don't get to wake up to soccer in the mornings anymore <laughs> on the weekends. For now, well, yeah, we yeah. do have a couple of tournaments coming in uh, starting next month. Well, that's, and that's gonna be insane. Obviously, uh, uh, Euros, Copa America, and of course the Olympics. That, yeah. That's gonna be a big rotation for sure. But we're gonna have to wait until next month for that. But yeah, as you said it just now, we do have. Uh, four games to review this week. Uh, two from Dynamo 2 and um, Dash and Dynamo as well during the weekend. Um, and yeah, we can probably start with Dynamo 2 since they finally won a home game. And I'm happy about it. <laughs> Woo! Woo! A win at home. A win at home as well. Yeah. Against a <laughs> against against a really good team, bro. Against a really good St. Louis team that was second second place in the standings coming into that game. <sighs> Even when you were watching it on the TV, if you weren't there, the announcer was even so annoying. Oh, this St. Louis team, they're just so, oh my gosh, and Dynamo too, they shouldn't be winning this game. <laughs> Shut up. <bro. laughs> of course. But, yeah, it was a good performance, a good performance, and it was fun to actually watch, man, and it was a, a, the first solid, solid performance we've seen from the team the entire season. So it was, it was good to see. Now, for me, because I, I was able to watch the full game, it – it was one of those games that there were, it was just on Apple TV, so there was no replay and I had to watch it. And I, I was happy to watch it. Obviously, not because I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, I have to watch, but because it was a pretty good game of soccer. Like both teams were just going at each other consistently. And like Houston just came out on top. The way they just keep moving forward, uh, the, I was definitely worried about the, the opponent just coming back into this one. But Houston just kept the pressure going, particularly. I was happy for X and Arsus, their goal of the season, which happened early in the first half. Um, momentum heading into the second half, it was still there. And we can probably talk a little bit more about the game after we go to the lineup a little bit because th- there were a couple things I wanted to mention. Obviously, the fact that, uh, obviously, I just mentioned X and Arsu, he made the start, obviously. And Xavier Valdez, he did start th- this game, and it was pretty important because he was going to play for the first team on Saturday, and he was just getting uh, getting the, that playing time consistently now because it was a big game for him. And, of course, uh, for him and the back line, just earning that clean sheet uh, over over the next 90 minutes, it was big. 
So, so shout out to Xavier Valdez for being the, uh, for being that starting keeper that we need always. Um, if you haven't already, I read the piece from um, Juan Pereira. He wrote about uh, Xavier Valdez. He was able to get an interview with him. So I encourage you to do that if you haven't already. But, but it was a big game for him. And, and also the back line, if you don't want to add anything else with you. Yeah, man, that back line has just been so- it has been solid for the most part. It's it's been the mistakes that just kind of have been killing us with the we giving up goals and not not getting the results. So uh, in this game, it it was really uh, optimizing to to see how well they played together during this game. And you're like, okay, this team's starting to come together. This team's starting to come together. They, they finally they've been playing enough together, been training enough together. All right, this is this is looking good. They're coming off that break too, it was a what a ten day break since the last game uh, for St. Louis as well. So the, the, you know, a really good team coming into to Houston, and then Houston just playing the way they played and just just dominated St. Louis. And uh, you know, the, as, as the scoreline said, two nothing clean sheet. So it was very. Uh, and Xavier Valdez had a had a had a very good game as you pointed out. And just sometimes he's on point. Sometimes he's just kind of put in situations where there's nothing he can do with the, the way the defense falls asleep lately. But uh yeah, big shout out to him and what a game he had. And uh, too bad he didn't get to play for the first team uh, over the weekend, but hey, he got to sit the bench. <laughs> well, yeah. And and of course we mentioned that uh defense having a pretty good game. Uh, midfield wise, of course, uh, you're if you're watching Dynamo two a lot, you can expect to we we're gonna start at this point. But of course, Brooklyn Reigns is gonna be there always. Sebastian Rodriguez are one of our best prospects that we have right now. Still a playful mighty, which is still pretty good. And of course, Diego Gonzalez. What can you say about him? Like in this game, also he was incredible with an assist, but he was it once again involved in a goal scoring opportunity. Um. I mean, what can you say? I, I'm going to keep saying it. He's going to be the first team at some point. And I don't know how soon it's going to be, but it's it's going to happen. You just see him play every single time. He's all, it's going to be involved in a, in, in a goal one way or another. Yeah, if he can just get into more of a, an attacking role, I think it'll benefit him more. Uh, and so there, there is that possibility there for him. But uh, midfield's a, a very congested place right now, so he's just going to have to keep the hustle, hustle and grind going uh, with Dynamo two for now, and, and just you know hope something that uh, will pop up. And it, it may be with another team first before it happens here. Just but just because there's so many in the midfield and the way they're just filling gaps, uh, you know, plugging gaps in, and so he's just got to keep working. <clears throat> Uh, his free kicks, he's going to – man, he's getting – he's close every freaking time. Set piece master too. So it would be nice to see him on the first team putting balls in the box like that to first team players too as well. Uh, but it may be a minute before we see him. You know, everybody wants Exxon. Everybody wants Diego, uh, Silla, uh, Anor. But, hey, they're, they're, they're still playing a D2, so they're just getting their minutes. Just keep working, guys. So yeah, and forward we do have also like Silla Chara and Arce starting, and then once again like Silla didn't get a goal in this game, but he was still playing pretty good. Uh, Achara still trying to get involved. We still I still like to see more goals for him, but of course one got, of the main highlights for this team. He did get the assist yeah. this time for for Exxon for Exxon's goal, so that's at least a bonus. So yeah, but you would yeah. like a. Uh, as much as he's been playing, you would like to see him get on the scoreboard finally. You're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and, yeah, and of course, Arsu, uh, getting that early goal, his uh, two guys at the start of the year, which is always good. Another player to watch for the first team very soon. Of course, like, yep. like I mentioned earlier, uh, when it comes to like the Gonzalez, the timing, I'm not sure how soon that's going to be, but I just know for a fact that's going to happen at some point. So, well, he's looking forward to that. And we did mention Exxon Arsu's uh, first goal of the year. And and throughout the game, they would the, the game would look like it was going to be like back and forth. Like St. Louis were definitely attacking, but and we would just end up trying to absorb and and trying to 
rebuild from the back. And it was kind of like that for the remainder of the first half because like it, it, it was one of those games that it was just entertaining to watch, but nothing really happened. The the press was working in this game, and, and I guess St. Louis was kind of surprised at what kind of happened in this game and how this game played out. But uh, Dynamo, everything executed properly, and the, the press uh, worked to win the ball. And then if an, if an attack didn't pan out, they would they would turn back and try to possess the ball like you would see with the first team and work the ball back around and, and then re- re- try to rebuild. And it had good opportunities. And it, like I said, it was a very solid game, and everything was executing well. You know, and get a two nothing win against a very solid team, and both goals were good goals too, as well. So, uh, as long as they could keep this build up going from game to game, it, it's. I mean, they're excited. Sometimes they can be exciting to watch. Sometimes they can be boring to watch. You expect more because you see all the talent there. On well, the second half, the, the main highlight for me was uh, Maddox Finley. He is a seventeen year old Dynamo County product that. Uh, made his that was able to play tonight. Like he also did us at the 61st minute, and he would score a goal one minute later. Uh, he's he will actually replace Sexton Arsu, and he would just come in and like even though the goal uh, he was like at the right place at the right time, he was able to get his first pro goal. So that that's always good in my book. He was the third or fourth shot on goal in that little sequence right there that happened where the ball just yeah. should have gone in the goal twice before saves were made blocks were made and then it just fell to him and i still don't know how he fit it through because it looked like it went between a player and the keeper and then you just and then you're like you see the net pop in the back and then like okay that's that's a goal yeah. Watching it on TV, I, I don't know. I'm sure, like in person, it was probably driving the fans nuts seeing it in person. But yep. <laughs> and we what a struggle, what a what a scramble, and and then he it it, it it fell to him, bro. And he was in the right place, right time. And and hey, super sub is what you call him when they score one minute off coming off the bench. Hundred <laughs> percent, no, yeah, and I'm definitely okay with that. Um, I know, yeah. After that, the, the game itself, like he still would be at a lot more opportunities. I feel like. They could have definitely scored a couple more, but it would just end up a two to nothing. Uh, we did mention it already, but first clean sheet of the year, uh, Homer away, uh, first home win, of course, and and of course, uh, Maddox Finley getting his first professional goal. So a lot of firsts uh, for this year, and a big result at home for sure. Yeah, big big win. So like I said, I hope we can play keep the keep the. the- the, the play and the execution consistently and keep, and move move forward from this game to the next and and, and build off of this one and see uh, see if the team can get on a, a string of uh, getting points not just wins but you know draws to get some points and just uh, just work their way back up in that in that division that division I think it's what eight eight teams and they're sitting in seventh I think uh, going uh, in, yeah, just sitting in seventh. So not doing too well this season. Obviously, the slow start, but uh, it was just uh, like I said, build off this off of this game, and hopefully we can move from here and get more points in the next game. Next game, I think is what uh, come. It was uh, shoot, uh, Tacoma. Oh God, the rival. Tacoma, yeah, yes, I, yeah. I, 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 I do agree <laughs> with you. The, the rival Tacoma. So, but we'll we'll see when whenever we get to that point. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. So let, let, let's not worry about that for them because no. we, we want to stay happy. We want to stay happy and talk about the dash right now because well, we're not. We're not. Uh, ti- we're not. Uh, what are we called? Uh, we're not time jumpers. <laughs> we can't jump into the future and then come back into the past, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, you're right. You're right, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's. We, we want to keep things happy for now, and one way to to have that by. Talking about the Dash already because the Dash have finally won a home game, y'all. Finally. <laughs> Man. Finally, bro. Finally, like you <laughs> said. I, I even had to ask you, I think it was, I'm, I'm, if I was at the stadium, because obviously I went to this game on Friday, it was at the stadium, Herman showed up and then uh, watched most of the game. But I think I, before the game, I, I asked you, I was like, to how many how many days was it? And, and you told me, when like, we were like seven days short of 365 days since we won at yeah. home. 
which is nuts, bro. Just nuts. And so we're like building up to this game. We're, we're like, you have to get a win. You have to find three points. You have to find it. You, you have to do something. You need that win, especially. You need that win because we're, we've been talking about on previous episodes how we're, we're in this hole. Can't sit in that hole too much longer. You got to do yourself out. And so going into this game, you, you've seen the lineup's been consistent going up into this game. So you're you're hopeful coming into this. And, uh, you know, then then the game happened and you get that 3 nothing dub. Man. And it was just awesome to see, awesome to, to watch, awesome to, to – to, <laughs> Just enjoy. It was just a, such a great game, the way the girls played it, everything. And I think you said it at one point, uh, even on, on Twitter, but I, I, I won't do verbatim. I'll let you tell me about it, man. How, how did you – what did you think about this game, man? Three nothing. I mean, just heading into this game, must win was definitely an honest statement. And you yeah. already mentioned the fact that before this game, they were really like less than a week away from – from going a full calendar year without a, a, a home win in league play. And for me, it's not acceptable. Just, just the fact that they've gone all like all those months without a single home win. And, and like, like I mentioned earlier in a previous episode is not definitely Fran Alonso's fault that they're in this situation uh, because of this, uh, that the, those strings of performances really, precede him it's not it's not really his fault but at the same time you look at the home games we already had this year and it's just kind of those wasted opportunities so just really the fact that we we let teams just run run us over time and time again um i know yeah like for me it was a game he had, he had to win and and obviously like north carolina it's it's an opponent that like like other opponents in the league they're kind of inconsistent and all that for now but just heading into this game, they had to get a result, um, and I, I'm particularly and, happy they, they got it here. And this is the reverse matchup, as as we all know. We started the season against North Carolina yep. and get our butts kicked five to one in North Carolina. So we've already played them once. We know what they look like. We know what they're coming, and they're probably coming into into Houston. They're like, who who who's this team? <laughs> I don't recognize half these players right now, you know, because we were yep. still building building our team at the, even at the start of the season. So. Uh, they they were they taken taken by surprise as as the fans were taken by surprise too, you know. And but like we've been saying in the other episodes, it, it's just it's a a trust the process. They're building something up, and Fran and just has to translate it more. And it actually looked like it it had was just being it it played well. It just just played well. But ah, it was just so happy, man. I I like that just remembering that game as I'm talking and the, the, the crest and just the way the girls played. It's just, uh, it was just amazing. And what a freaking performance. And we've got something to build off of the starting lineup. We, we were hoping for consistency and we got more consistency again, Jane Campbell starting in the back, Nilsson and Jacobs, of course, but then there's the girl Tarsion or Tarsi. Uh, she was given the start. A little, I was a little bit surprised that she was given the start. We we thought she was going to come off the, the bench and play like the last 30, uh, depending on how the game was going, situation going. But I like the move front made right here and decided to start her from the – to just give her just the start and let her play from the beginning and, and let her just work her way into it. So that means she's had a good week of practice or a good two weeks of practice since she's been here. Uh, your midfield was Patterson and West covering the ends. Oliveri playing that roaming. Buntingham and Schmidt playing the CDMs. Of course, Rubinson is still out, so she uh, she's still nursing her injury. You had Bachman playing a forward position, so that's why you watching the game. You saw all over the place. And then Lolozzi was playing your sh- striker. So, as expected, right, a little bit. Lolozzi gets the start. Lolozzi playing the striker position, being the, the main attacking. But uh, other than that, Tarsion getting the start. Uh, we'll go into details about the players, but uh, any comments on the lineup? Uh, did anything surprise you right there? I mean, you just mentioned it, just the fact that Tar- Tarsiana was able to start in her first game. And and her first game, really her first appearance like in the lineup. Like, yeah, I was just, period. I, I, I could have sworn she was going to come in off the bench at some point. But like it's just, I mean, that, that tells you a lot because there's definitely a lot of trust in her now. Uh, she's 
uh, one of the best prospects the team has right now. And I'm just happy to see her, particularly with the game, which we can talk a little bit about later. But we are here. I love see getting another another chance with the start here. I feel like this this game in particular, she uh, was definitely utilized very well. And Ramona Bachman, man, she's she's becoming one of the most important players in the team right now. And uh, this game will prove it for sure. So a good lineup. We're uh, not and I, I like, like you said. I like where he put a Lozy up top instead of playing the wing a little bit. So she it it looked a little bit different and looked a little more natural for her playing in that position. So and it, it and it worked out. She was grinding and she hustles too. So you always like that when a striker playing up top, especially when your team is is pressing. So going into the game, the whistle blows and the dash have the ball. And as the clock winds, it just it, you just noticing like okay, well, you know we're still have the ball, we're still behind the ball. If you look at possession at the end, it the numbers are for North Carolina, but it really felt like Dash controlled the game, controlled the tempo. I thought they've had poor possession, but obviously not when it was looking at the stats. Even at one point, I looked at like thirty seven percent for us. It's like that's got to be wrong. It's got to be flipped. But whatever, it, it looked really good, man. The performance and the consistency and the midfield, the midfield, they're they're all playing together, and I think that's a the, the consistency of playing together and playing well made a very big difference today. So the midfield, I think, was very key to allowing the individual play to to evolve into the team play, and finally, people were on the same page. I don't know. Did you did you notice? How, give me your thoughts on midfield play this time. It, obviously, it's the five of the wings, but the you know Schmidt and and uh, Puttingham. But midfield play has been a big question in, in our previous episodes. It looks so much better here, and I just really liked how they they've been flowing around during the game. And the difference with this point from other games is just the fact that that it felt like they were on the same page. If for me, it just felt like they. They knew what they were doing. They were trying to absorb the, the attack coming at them and just trying to open up those opportunities to uh, to run the ball forward. Um, and that's what I really liked about about them. And it's something that should be considered for other games because the the way this lineup looked, it was great. And it did look a little bit different than previous games as far as the, the style because it, it, it looked – it looked at times where it was like a four four one one, and you Patterson was the one coming back and playing more of a defensive role when we were defending, and then it would translate uh, coming that so defending four four one one, and then it would translate into the attacking three three five two formation that that Fran has been putting out there. So it, it did look a little bit different, and it, it looked a little more organized, as you said. So it, and it was just great, and Sophie. She was pushing up even higher than usual, and I think that was just the benefit of the the team being able to press and win the ball back, and just keep the ball pressured onto North Carolina. And so I love this, Sophie. Your your star CDM is is getting into the box and and asking for crosses that are like, hey, you're not the forward girl. Calm down. No. <laughs> but it, it it worked out because we're not get we weren't getting countered this game. And I'm sure if North Carolina was able to do something a little bit more with the ball and, and be more uh, dangerous, then she probably would have held back and just kind of played her role a little differently. But she was trying to get into the game and trying to get into the into the back of the net, man. And it's, it was fun watching her because I like watching off the ball as well sometimes just to see what players are doing and see who's ready, who's making those runs. And uh, so good midfield play. So let's go back to the big new – Brazilian six foot twenty year old monster that is Tarcian. <laughs> that girl's incredible. Nervous to start the game, and it showed early. I think her first touch was a mistake, <laughs> but luckily we we're able to get it right back and play it back to Campbell. Her second touch was a, a bad pass, and then she got into the game. She started getting into the groove. Her touches got better. She was making crosses, uh, for switches across the field. She was, uh, she's her marking, uh, making slide tackles. Everything that was hyped about her 
<laughs> you you saw it and just made you even like this this girl is is she's freaking awesome and she she played the the promise right, yeah <laughs> yeah bro, the pro, yes and she played the right side Jacobs played the middle but in time she was in the middle so it it, it was whew, man this is what we needed so this line this this line is built in the back and Katie Katie Lynn is you know she's there she's you know, taking care of her baby. She's going to come back at some point, hopefully. And then that'll just be just another dynamic piece to this back line. And nobody's going to score a goal ever because Jane Campbell's still on the back of the net. But Tarsian, bro, tell me, you, you had to be cheeking when, when you saw Tarsian play. Well, my expectations just skyrocketed after seeing the lineup <laughs> and starting on immediately. I was like, okay, she must be pretty good. And she was. Uh, she, and you mentioned it earlier, she both throughout the game, like her start uh, was kind of shaky, but uh, that's okay. It's, it's, it's really her first game trying to adapt and all that. And the second half for her, she she was a different player. Uh, she was, she, she it felt like she was on the team for like five years already. And <laughs> it, it, it was, it, the way she played, it, it was just great. Like the way she was able to just intercept the passes, uh, knowing, just tracking back, uh, making sure that like any players getting past her, it, it, it was pretty good. And I'm looking forward to see how she she keeps developing over the course of the year. It's funny how we both thought she was going to come off the bench and maybe play 30 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on how the game is. She gets to start. She makes it through halftime. She makes it through the 60 minutes of Mark. And then you're like, okay, she's she's playing ninety. She's playing ninety. Yeah, already. I love this. So we're not we. Hey, because you know Franz said she, you know, she's not ninety minute fit. We're gonna try to get her some minutes, bro. I mean, that implied like ninety minutes. I mean, hey, we got ninety. She played the full. She looked great. The team looked great. They were you know, they were they were going to her and supporting her and, and giving her high fives and and especially when she went down and she got hurt twice uh, and took a took a little break out there. You know, faster game, rougher game than than probably what she's used to playing. But hey, welcome to Houston. Welcome to the Dash. And man, the fans, you're quickly quickly going to become a fan favorite uh she was out roaming around houston yesterday already you know getting get him some new gear uh from 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 best buy so make sure you go see uh, uh you know doggo and he'll hit you know, he'll try to sell you some good stuff maybe sell you what she ended up buying but <laughs> yeah but tarsia man that was super huge and what a big what a massive what a massive piece to have to, to add to that back line all right moving on you kind of mentioned to her earlier and what a game she had, but Bachman and Bachman to me was probably my player of the game, the way she played and, and the performances she had, she didn't play the full 90. She did end up getting a yellow card and ended up getting pulled out later. I think subbed for Ordonia's as a matter of fact, I think her performance, she just, when you, when she came to the team and you, and you looked at her and you, you researched about her, you saw what type of player her, she was, and you're like, okay, I like this. She takes on defenders and blah, 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 and does this very great. And then when she started with the team, she kind of had a slow start and wasn't translating into that that player that you saw on the highlight films and the highlight reels. And it, it obviously had something to do with coming to a new team, trying to get fit, trying to find where you're going to play, trying to play a position that without having to play three different positions – and finally, the, that groove started to kick in this game, and she was all over the frigging place. She was taking on defenders. She was playing. I, I call it kind of like the cam position, just from the way the she was playing behind the striker out there. And it just looked frigging great. And then Bachman finally getting that her first goal of the season, her first goal for the team, a left footed banger into the net. Keeper couldn't do nothing about it, and it was beautiful. First half goal to put us up at the half man, but Bachman, the story is finally coming out what we've expected to see. How do you see it? Uh, I knew the goal was coming for sure. Uh, she, the way she was playing, it reminded me of, of how she played against Angel City on the road. And yeah, I mean she 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 was starting to show up slowly. She was definitely. Like just her talent was was there, and just just the way she was able to like get get past 
other defenders. Like it, it was, it was insane. And I like, I, I, I like to see her play every single time she's on the field now. And it's probably something that I expected more uh, when she came over after we were watching her highlights. And um, we have you could definitely play off the game for sure. Uh, she will definitely uh, keep showing it out uh, throughout the second half. But but yeah. She talked at the press conference afterwards. She was the player that was invited to talk after Fran, and she she was talking about the team because she she was asked, uh, you know, a couple of the uh, Jorge from Dynamo Fan TV asked her about uh, something about the team and her answer, and she amplified amplifies this shit. That didn't sound right, but she was talking about the process and how we and trusting what is being taught in front of us and trusting the process. And I love that she said, trust the process. I heard it once from Alex Singer as well. Uh, after the game, whenever uh, the fans were getting signatures, she came by and she said it to us, trust the process. So trust the frigging process. But Bachman talking about Herman Benitez, I was at the press conference as well and asked, asked her a couple questions and she got descriptive about the team and, and how much, a bunch of new girls and how much time they've had they've they haven't had to play together and how it, everything's starting to to come together and the uh, it, the chemistry is building from from day to day on the training pitch and it's great so I'll make sure to post those clips on noodle time that that Herman asked those questions and the trust the process answer uh, but it go to YouTube and search it if you haven't seen it already, or just come to the Twitter page and, uh, and the Instagram page. We'll make sure they get posted there. So you can go in, listen to her answer. Very, very interesting answer, but uh, moving on to your Venezuelan girl, Barb, I'll just let you start with her. I'm not even going to say nothing. I knew you had it. <laughs> Man, tell me about um, her performance in this game, man. She looked lively for sure. And I'm 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 not trying to be biased here, but she had a pretty good game. <laughs> and and this season for her, she's been showing up for sure. I I wanna say like as consistently as I hope, but she in this game in particular, I, I was like, okay, if she if she finds a gap, she's gonna score at some point. And Lo and behold, she she gets a long range a chance, and she she was able to capitalize off a off a pass from Michelle Lucy. And of course, I'm happy for Lucy just for getting uh for getting involved in the game like that. And with your mission, how she was like able to succeed with the way she was placed. But of course, I'm I'm happy for Bob getting her first goal of the year that way because I, I was definitely excited. A much needed goal, and for us going back to previous sets, so Bart's been getting a lot of flack from from us, and we're like, uh, Andres is not getting the time. Maybe Andres needs to get a start here, and and Barb gets another start, and she actually did play a lot better in this game than she has played in previous games, and then to get that Golasso, where she, the 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 pass was perfect. The touch around the defender, and that, and just give herself enough room to where she takes that shot, and the keeper can't do nothing about it. Puts it in that top ninety left corner right there, and what a beautiful goal! And that time the score was one to nothing too. So that that making that two to two to nothing right then and there just like was ah, oh, bro, like you're feeling really good now. The way the defense has been playing, the way the team has been playing, you're like, hey. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna win this game. We're gonna win this game. So it was, it was fun. Bar finally had a had a great game, and it'll solidify probably her getting another start when we return from international break. <laughs> oh yeah, um, the the chair on top. You're definitely gonna mention it, um, but just just the fact of getting Ordonez off the bench uh, to later get involved in that eight minutes later, I felt that was pretty good too. Yeah, or, or Donia's is another focus here, and she comes off the bench. She didn't start, so we're kind of surprised she didn't start. But it's it's okay when there's a plan. There's a plan, and and Fraud took Bachman off and put in Ordonia's. Bachman can't, probably came off because of the yellow. Uh, Ordonia's comes in, and she's kind of playing that roaming cam position. She was, and Alozi is still playing up high, and and bam, bam, here we go. She finds she finds the ball 
off a shot from Malozzi that the, the keeper parries, but doesn't doesn't have control of it. And Adonius falls up, right place, right time inside the box. Target target player, beautiful game, three three nil, and you're just you're you're enjoying yourself, especially if you're in the in the stadium, and that and that the vibe was just uh, awesome, especially for the players. Just to win it friggin' home and give give the fans something to be like, hey, you know, it, we're less than five thousand fans. We need to get more people out here. But how do I tell them? How do I bring my friends? You know, you you tell them about that game you just witnessed and you just watched and that three nothing, and you you could tell Ordonia's Barb Bachman when they score their goal, where do they go? They Bachman went to the corner stand right there, Barb. She kind of she looked at the fans and then celebrated with her entire team. Ordonia, she ran to the to the corner over there to the, the to the to the fans. So, so you see, it means something for the players and, and, to, and to, for the fans to be there. So we need to try to get more fans and just uh, show them that we support them and just look at the way this game was played and the way this team played and or, Ordonia's with the finish and you just uh, it, three nothing and I. I Hey, I celebrated on all three goals this game, and I probably won't do it again just because that was my one time. I feel like I get a pass since uh, you know they did it to us in Austin. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna celebrate this time. I didn't stand, <laughs> I didn't stand up, I didn't yell. I just got put my hands up, and, and, and you know, and that was it. That was it. But I did it on all three goals. But so I had fun, enjoyed it. So what, that was my one. I won't do it again. Uh, well, you know. But had had fun, but Ordonius. But another a highlight player, man. A highlight player. We said her name a few times. Alozi. Alozi playing starting as a striker and played a very, very good game. Had the assist for Barb, you said. Got the got took the shot that Ordonius ended up scoring. So she doesn't get credit for an assist, but hey, I'm giving it to her because the keeper couldn't control the ball and Ordonius is there to follow up. And just her hustle and her grit, just putting pressure on those defenders. I like what she was doing up top, and she was playing by herself up top. She did have a striker or a forward behind her to give support, so she didn't do everything by herself, and she has the right kind of pace. But I just wanted to make sure to highlight her in this episode since she's also one that we've kind of talked about struggling a little bit and want to see more out of. She finally had a good game. She didn't score, but she was involved in the scoring. So good job, Alozi. Oh, yeah. yeah, and she she's gonna have to keep momentum going for her, uh, particularly because of the international break coming up. I can't remember uh-huh. if she is going to the national team for this break. I, I think she might, but well, yeah. I didn't check to see any call ups, and I didn't notice that you know Dash didn't post anybody being called up yet that we've noticed. So uh, I did notice that Maria Sanchez got called up. So I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen an Ordonez call up, or maybe she's just not getting called up. So uh, they're out there. So maybe after this episode, we'll do some research and uh, and see if we can see if everybody gets a break or if they're going to go play for their country. Yeah. Shout out to. Jane Campbell for getting called up to the national team. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, call up for Jane Campbell under the new head coach, and it's 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 big because I think the uh, uh, SNA didn't get called up for this cycle, so, and that's pretty big because we, these are the last friendlies before the Olympic Games start. So we might see Jane Campbell in the Olympics very soon in the next couple of months. So well, it's something to keep an eye on. But we might see her start in a U.S. game now, maybe, possibly. Yeah, likely, hopefully, yeah. ho- hopefully. So that's good to see. We'll make sure to keep you all up to date whenever that happens. And Jane Campbell starting tonight. Go watch this game. Boom. All right. All right, man. Uh, stats for this this frigging game. Because, like I said, I felt like that we had we had possession, but obviously it, we did not have possession. Whenever you look at the numbers, 35 to 65%, we had nine shots. They had 13 shots. Ours were six on target and theirs were three on target. So that was the, the big friggin', the big friggin' difference right there. Big chances. We had two. They, I mean, even the passes, like I'm, I'm like, I, I guess I was just like, timed out or something when North Carolina had the ball. I didn't feel like they had that much possession or or that even that many friggin' passes. So whatever. What I saw worked. So let's just keep doing it. But 
uh, as you said, stats going across left to right weren't in favor of Dash at all, except for shots on target. And then they finished those shots. So that's the shots on target are the ones that give you the chance to score shots off target. Obviously <laughs> you're not having a real good chance because you blasted one into the stands. So, uh, Dash were on par with their shots this game, and they translated three of them into the back of the net. North Carolina couldn't do nothing. And as a matter of fact, Jane Campbell wasn't even really called. I think she made three saves total this time, but one of them was one that the, the fans had to cheer about. The rest were just pretty easy. Jane Campbell did could take care of her in her sleep. Um, so it was nice that we don't have to call on her this game. But the clean sheet does count still. But – uh, box final thoughts on this game anything you'd like to to add and talk about before uh we uh move on to the one last topic on this dash day it's a celebration <laughs> well let's need to keep the momentum going uh, like we mentioned just earlier to do have a two-week break uh for people on international duty so that's something to consider uh they go in the road next time which they they think pretty decent uh, better than home, at least on record for now. But but it, it's gonna keep it up, and hopefully, uh, Farrell also has that sorted out. Yeah, it's, hey, two week break. Maybe it's a good one that will need it. The players going to international, have fun. So the rest that are here will get some extra time playing with those first teamers and getting some grind going, uh, some chemistry going. And, and so uh, we'll see what happens. Like you said, we'll be on the road, so we we need to be expected to actually play well because it is on the road. Uh, but you, again, you never know. So we'll just see how they come out and play, and hopefully it'll be more more uh, evolution off of these past two games that they played, past two wins out of three games lately. So, hey, I like saying that, and let's continue to, to, to build off of it. And you're moving up in the standings as well, where we were in 13th. I think now we're in 9th. So here we go. We're not so far in the hole right now. So three points was very, very nice and very productive. All right, man. We had a nice little hot topic last week that we kind of talked about, and then we kind of, kind of brought back up during the week, uh, promoting the episode. But the Alex Singer topic, I want to revisit it with you because we both had two different answers, obviously. But I, I, I wanted to bring it up because this is what we've been building for, and we've been wanting to to see the dash. <clears throat> this is what we hope the dash was trying to translate what. Fran was tr- execute, uh, training and teaching and trying to execute on the field and the girls just playing well. And finally, it's starting to come together. You, you've built a defensive line. You brought in those right players. You, you like what you have in your midfield. You, you know, uh, So Marie is not such a big deal missing out there. You miss her crosses. You miss you miss her her nice little moves. But I think we're going to be okay with these rookies stepping up. So great draft picks. You know Bachman a great pick. Uh, Rubinson is a great pick. You got Puttingham is just playing that uh, great ball right now. Just everything, man. So I'm still. I obviously wasn't Alex Singer out last week. I don't think you were Alex Singer out. You're like Alex Singer more time. But I just wanted to reiterate, man. Alex Singer in and trust the process and we like what they're doing we like what fraud is doing will it continue to translate so right now like we said last week we'll tell the truth when we need to tell the truth but it's a good thing anything you want to add to the alex singer singer topic for me it's like the at least the signings for the, this year of the place i haven't brought in like from the draft until like signings they they've been producing consistently now, and I'm definitely okay with that. They've they've been doing that, particularly. I was um. When it comes to Alex Singer, I I would say like she was definitely her seat was getting warmer for sure, but of course as we have this project going, and it's probably something that we have to wait a little bit more to see, it's just flourish over time. It's it's something that I can I can definitely wait also because Far Alonso just got here. And it's something that they have to develop over time. So it's it, it's something I can wait on for sure. But if if you ask me, like who's gonna be the first one to go at some point, it's, it's probably just gonna be Alex Singer if things just just don't are yeah if things just go don't go through the way they've been looking at. So but yeah, well, it's 
I guess we're in an okay spot, but we have to improve. Yeah, it's it's uh, some something to keep an eye on. It's, it's just a topic that the fans are talking about, so that's just why I bring it. I bring it up just because this is something that's in her defense this week, where the, the team looked well, played well, everything looked well. This is what they're trying to sell, and boom. And so you now we just got to hope for consistency and, and continue on on with it like that. So uh, I think I'm ready to hop on the plane and and fly out to L.A. for a late game with the Dynamo now because. Uh, that was the DTFO time right there, bro. Very happy for the dash. Like happy for the win, but we have to get sad for the game in Carson to have them last night. Man. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, it's an ugly one. That second half was pretty ugly, but we can probably just like stick around the first half. <laughs> <laughs> well, even Ben said the first half was probably the best the best half that he's seen uh, this team play the whole season. Uh, it might have been a little bit of a stretch, obviously, because we can't you know score. We did get one, though. Uh, so it, it's a very good first half. It was a very, very good promising first half. Uh, uh, he said we let off the gas there towards the end of the first half and to give up that goal by Galaxy to let them tie us going into the half. So that, that, that sucked, but – it looked well. We got blessing to start. We've been asking for more blessing. However, blessing gets hurt and comes out at halftime. So, boom, what we needed most and what obviously I think was a big a big part of this game where the game changed was blessing being taken up and his Brad Smith coming in. It was just different. Blessing was just doing more and providing more. Obviously, his goal that he scored was, uh, you know, just because of the press and putting the team under uh, the, the the keeper under pressure. And then, boom, here you go. He steals a freaking ball and puts one in the back of the net. So, very, very good first half. Something to – you're like, okay, hopeful. But you're on the road at the same time, and you know this team likes to give up goals, and you don't score goals. So, you were content with what was going on. You're like, but you needed something in the back of the net. And you know, all you got was the one, and then you gave up the one for halftime. So, again, good first half, but you're mad going into the half. Yeah, I could probably start with the lineup because there's a lot of significant changes that happen. Yeah, that's particularly true. Particularly players that were missing. And the big one, one of the big ones you could say is definitely the fact that Steve Clark was unavailable that because I, I believe his nose was broken after the game against Dallas. And he he wasn't available, so Tarby had to start, and Sierra Valdez was available off the bench. And so that, as it's become tradition now, Ferreira is still not available. Uh, Mackenzie Gaines was also not available because of the injury suffered against Dallas as well. And Kovacic, uh, Seba Kovacic, he was out the due to yellow card accumulation. So he was unavailable. So that's a lot of pieces missing and stuff to sort out for Ben Olsen. And I guess for the most part, you could say that the, the lineup was mostly the ones we expect. But of course, the one that was, that was to watch was Jefferson Valverde potentially making his debut, and which he did in the second half as uh, just in the back line or just trying to move stairs or, or just replace the stairs to, to just move forward. But but yeah, we can probably talk about the, the starting eleven now. Yeah, man, get 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 me into that lineup because it was curious to see what Ben was going to do without Seba being available to play in this game, and what was he going to do with the nine, and what was he going to do? You know, uh, period. What was he going to do? You, you, you didn't know. I kind of asked for blessing to be that nine, just because we don't have a striker. He likes to play all over the place. Put him at the nine. You know, but going into your lineup, obviously he did a Liu at the striker and Blessing as the left wing, and uh, I was okay with it. And Blessing was still still just as dangerous as he was. So, it, it probably still could have been nice to switch him in a Liu and and let Blessing make those uh, runs because I think uh, Blessing has a little more control on the ball, and then Liu is just more dangerous off the wing. So, uh, I guess I'm a, I, I'm okay with the way what Ben did and. Probably there was no other way to do it anyways. So you're not starting Gabe Siegel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and just going back to the back line, uh, uh, something I wanted also to mention was the fact that Franco Escobar was available. And I didn't think he was going to start initially, but he was available off the bench. And 
he didn't play until like late in the second half. So it was pretty much just uh, Dorsey. Well, we had like Steris, Vincenco, Mikel, and, Dor- and Dorsey over there. Um, and also up top, we did have, oh, well, in the midfield, over, we just had like uh, Artur, Abbasi, and just Ache Ache. And Herrera, like he was, he played full 90. So that's something. Yeah. Hey. I mean that's that's they played full ninety but didn't look didn't didn't play well so <laughs> it's probably yeah. one of those that like, okay you're okay to sub Hector out this game please do but obviously he didn't so sometimes you question Ben's subs you know and I'm 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 glad that I found out quick enough that it was a blessing injury is the reason why he came out at halftime because at first I was questioning why the hell is blessing not playing? Why the hell is blessing not playing? Where the hell is blessing? Why the hell did blessing sub out for Brad Smith? What the hell are you thinking there? But obviously he was hurt. So he had to be subbed out. So it's okay. But Valverde, you said came in and uh, stairs go out so he could play the CDM and they could go to a three back. That didn't help the offense at all because they still yeah. could, they still couldn't get into anything dangerous into the box. Uh, it was just second half was just absolutely boring to me. Nothing was happening, yeah. nothing at all. Can't make nothing happen. And I think Ben sounds like a broken record right now, where he's just saying the same stuff over and over and over again because it's the same results over and over and over again. We look good, we play well, we possess well, we move the ball well, we don't shoot well, <laughs> we don't score well we don't take opportunities we don't we make mistakes to end up losing games so it sounds like a broken record and you know he, he get, he's getting frustrated too and then when the f- f- reporters in the press conference ask the same question over three times in a row he really gets frustrated with it <laughs> so, yeah uh, it's no, no fun times right now so dynamo are struggling and it's and it's a big struggle and it's freaking one position that needs that puts that DNA together to get it fixed. So we'll see and what really just to, Yeah. And just to summarize the the game itself, would rather just like everything unfold in the second half. Like pretty much the, the difference here was just LA's counter and the press up top because it was insane. And it's something that we have to recognize because that's the way they were able to tie the game. They, they forced us to make a mistake and able to capitalize on that um they just kept momentum going in the second half to to get to put to get the lead um and really it was just like from there it was kind of just like okay just keep uh keep things away from houston and we don't talk about lead you today um i refuse to say his name uh well you just you just, just, you just did so you broke it yeah. and <laughs> and I, I mean i have to i'm the one who supports him and, and backs him and defends him every week so i, I support him too i support him too <laughs> yeah okay good thank you for saying that but yeah we have to talk about him bro he missed that damn sitter right friggin there right friggin there right in front of the box two three yards in front of the friggin net and he hits he still finds a way to hit it over and all he had to do was just touch it towards the goal if the keeper makes a save, the keeper makes a save, and we just laugh again. But missing it like that makes it even worse. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Come on, bro. you got to be kidding me. Put it in the net. Yeah, right? you're not helping. Yeah, Ali is just not helping his case right now. And I, I want I want to defend him. I, I, I support him to the fullest as a Dynamo player. But, but this is how you get – fans to not like you you know um and man you just need to you need to put that away man like and, and when on. they already don't like you <laughs> right like, yeah because like it's the majority that don't like a Liu's play and and he just needs to finish bro and if he would just freaking finish he'd be a hot topic and not a freaking well he's still a hot topic regardless but It'd be a good topic to talk about not a bad topic to talk about but god damn a Liu, come on boy I don't know what you're doing right now, but if I call you, you better be out on the pitch taking shots, practice shots. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't, I don't want to talk about this game anymore. It's getting me angry. I'm, uh, I'm fine with that. The only thing is uh, <laughs> Ben Ben went to Wicked Puig and told him, you're no Super Saiyan. Your hair oh, is yeah, so friggin' <laughs> ugly. You should have done that. You look like a... And then he walked away. <laughs> 
yeah, that kind of looked like an old, old man Yosa Cloud moment. Honestly, I was like, come, man, come on, Yosa, just get back in the locker room. <laughs> I don't even know what goes on or what the context behind that was. That's why you he just walked up to him and said, yeah. your, hair, your hair is ugly. Your hair is ugly. I don't know what you're doing with that shit. <laughs> Go back to the locker room and die that back. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right, bro. Let's, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's get back on the plane and head back to Houston and go to Sabercast Stadium now. How about no? <laughs> hey. I'm fine with that. We're at Sabercat Stadium. The team goes down one to nothing, goes up two to one, goes down or gives up two to two, and then we lose on an own goal, three to two. That's Donna Dose report. Y'all, next time. Now, All right, back in the car. I'm headed home. <laughs> man, I don't know why. I don't know why this happens every single time against Tacoma Defiance. Like, it's. I feel like Destiny is wanting me to hate this team than I already do. Like every time we get we hit we get them in the schedule, I just feel like okay, something something dumb's gonna happen. Um lo and behold. Well it's twice in uh, the, I, twice in the playoffs. <laughs> right? Twice in the playoffs. So then they they've beaten us yeah. five five times in a row now. So Tacoma Fiance is probably our biggest rival because we can't beat these fools and we always end up it, MLS next pro the first season we played them twice and then played them in the playoffs and then I think we played them in the playoffs again, so we played it. We can't beat them. They are our rival until we can beat them, which is crazy because they're uh, fifteen hundred miles away. <laughs> Look, my my main takeaway for this game is the fact that Maddox Finley got uh, his second goal of the year, and he actually did start. Oh, he didn't start actually. He came in the second half. But still, like he uh, getting his second goal, second consecutive goal in this game, it was it was pretty good. So shout out to him for for getting that done and Femi for tying the game and the, um to at the start of the second half for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I I was able to watch the game completely. Uh, of course, it's a, a game that was shown in MLS season pass. So there's no replay afterwards. I was able to watch the highlights and I was like, oh, guys, please. Yeah. And then the own goal, and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, the own goal was just un- so unlucky because the keeper was already making a dive, expecting it to do this, and the defender gets in and makes a touch, and it just dribbles into the friggin' back of the net. And you're like, come on, man. We just gave up a goal to tie four minutes ago, and now this crap happens, and it's the 84th minute or whatever, 88th minute or something like that. And you're like, 84th, I think. And like, Jesus Christ. Well, there's the game. We just lost. Uh, you know, and it, <laughs> just <clears throat> so what we built off of against St. Louis failed us in this one. So it wasn't consistent. Two home games back to back, and two different types of games against two very good opponents. So you were kind of expecting a little bit from Wednesday to translate over here. You know, well they scored two goals, but they gave up three this time, uh, and gave it up in a comeback fashion and late. Just like the way the season started, so boo hoo failure. I don't know what Kenny Bundy uh, had to say about it, but yeah, that was just disappointing last night. And just a couple notes from the lineup uh, before I move on. It's it's the fact that so Nico Hansen because Sarah Valdez was with the first team in uh, against the LA Galaxy. Nico Hansen started the in goal, and also Donald Two announced earlier this weekend that. They signed defender Jefferson Medina on loan from Fortaleza back in Brazil. And he, well, actually, Colombia, never mind. There's, there's another club called Fortaleza in Brazil, so I, th- I assume that. But it's actually Fortaleza, uh, CIF in Colombia. Um, and yeah, like it's, he didn't really play this game, but he was available off the bench. So I, I can really have an opinion on him since he didn't play. So yes, yeah, so that, that too. That to consider, also to keep an eye on, since it's an 18 year old defender. So, the, the, I'm sure that the, the the front office have an eye on him as well. Kind of like what we're doing with Animal 2, honestly. Yeah. And Reigns also didn't make it back and didn't get to play in this game because he was yeah. with the first team. So, with that, that, uh, that piece was missing in this game as well. Uh, what was it? Uh, <clears throat> Achara didn't get the start this time. It was. Uh, was it a Nor? They got the start up top. 
And, and he, yeah. So, yeah, so still and Arsu, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it was a good up, good up top again. You know, you know, a lot of firepower up there. But it's just something, something's just missing because you got Diego Gonzalez and Sebastian Rodriguez there in the middle with whoever fit, whoever filled in the, the spot for Reigns this, this weekend. I, I forget and I'm having a blank right now on the lineup, but it's, I don't know what's going on and why there can't be more consistency going on and, and, and better chemistry and better ball movement. It's just so much talent. It's crazy. Yeah, kind of like the situation we're at in the start of the year. Um, or just Tacoma just being good. Yeah. So it's could be could be a combination of both, honestly. But, Let's go with that. <laughs> but, I, but yeah, like I, I still trust this team. With they've already proven to us so they can get the job done. But yeah, it's it's just a matter of consistency now. And I believe their next game next week is it, a Friday game. But it's gonna be on the road against Portland. So it's it's a game they can get a result out of for sure. But we have to see it first. You've you've got Dynamo Wednesday against at home against Colorado. You have Dose on Friday in Portland, and then you have Dynamo on Saturday in Portland. So both teams will be together in Portland up there, and uh, will be in need of helping yep. each other if they can. But yeah, so make sure you're able to watch those on TV as well. Those will definitely be West Coast games, so they'll be nine thirty again. So rah rah rah. <laughs> I don't like staying up that late, even no. on a, even on a Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, I kind of have to be unfortunately, but well, yeah, that's how what the West Coast goes. Yeah, un- unfortunate, but hey, it sucks for them too. Whenever they got to get up and watch NFL at ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and we get noon, so whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's all I got to say, man. What about dose this time? Uh, We'll, we'll get to talk more about them, and hopefully they can play a little bit better on the road against Portland. So, yeah, just looking forward to how the season develops for Dynamo 2. Uh, Dynamo, come on, man. We need, don't, don't do that to me, man. Um, and Dash, thank you. Home against a very good Colorado team who just tied 3-3 three to three in their last game. So uh, Colorado's coming in looking good. They've had a lot of new pieces that's a different team than what we're used to. Obviously, we've already played them, so uh, familiar with them. What can we do? Dash get the break, international break, and then, you know, uh, port- at Portland. So this is going to be a big week for the Dynamo. What are we going to get out of it? I don't know, bro. I, I don't even want to think about it right now, so I'm going to stop and I'm going to move on, and I'm going to enjoy the Dash break, the Dash international break. Yeah, and, and just watch the – the women's national team games if Camel gets to start, hopefully. So there's yep. lots to look forward to. Yep. Yep. I think I'm good, bro. I don't think I got anything else for you on this this uh back and forth episode. This roller coaster, that's what we'll call it. We'll have, we'll have to come up with a name for this roller coaster. <laughs> Just a weird noodle like it goes yeah, sideways it's, all around. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, guys, as always, I would appreciate you tuning into this one and sharing all the episodes and all our content with everyone. As always, we do keep our updates up on, on Twitter, X, as it's, called, as it's called now, either a Dynamic Foxtrot or Noodle Tiempo. We're also on Instagram, pretty much the same handle as the one I have on, on Twitter, at Dynamic Foxtrot. And, of course, if you want to watch all of our episodes on video, we have it on YouTube and also on Ghost TV. And audio wise, pretty much uh, the big uh, podcast platforms are available. So, catch us there as well. And of course, leave us a review if you can. That helps a lot. Uh, we are also open to feedback. And since we're always trying to uh, keep changing our stuff if we have to, so we're always, uh, us and years open for us. So, we, we do appreciate your support, y'all. Yeah, give us the feedback, y'all. We des- 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 desperately need it. If it's anonymous, that's even better because then you don't have to worry yep. about that the flashback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in and staying real, y'all. Pages up. <laughs>